morning. The first lesson is from Daniel, chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. At that time, Michael, the great prince, the protector of your people, shall arise. There shall be a time of anguish, such as never occurred since nations first came into existence. But at that time, the people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness, like the stars forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 11 to 25. And every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all, all time those who are sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us, for after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. For there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed in pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Please stand for the gospel explanation. Oh. 
hard to praise Christ. Yet we continue to praise Christ because we know the world is not ending at this moment and that we are continually recipients of God's love and mercy. The future we have comes to birth with painful groans. A Russian airliner blown from the sky. A suicide bombing of a funeral in Baghdad. Twin bombings outside a mosque in Beirut. Coordinated attacks on restaurants, concert venues, and a soccer game in Paris. An earthquake and tsunami in Japan. Earthquakes in Mexico and California. The Israeli and Palestinian conflict. These are all the beginning of earth pains with painful groans. Cancer, Alzheimer's, depression, anxiety, alcohol, Parkinson's, and all those many others that affect us individually or even in our small communities are beginning of birth pains with painful groans. For those who have been through actual birth pains, know that the end result of many is rejoicing in the new life that is a result of those pains. The birth pains that the world experiences amidst the destruction of the temple, earthquakes, mass destructions, and violent acts is just the beginning of the birth pains that are not going to be the end of the world. Instead, they are just the pains that will bring about something new. To give birth to a new world, we must start with painful groans. Birth pains bring a sense of urgency to the women who are experiencing them. There is urgency to bring a new life into the world. Although I have not experienced birth pains myself yet, I have had the experience of being a nursing student on the labor and delivery floor. In one day shift, I experienced the urgency that women have when birth pains start and how not all births happen at the pace that they would like. In that day, I began the day monitoring one lady who by the end of my shift had still not given birth. Yet another lady had come in about halfway through and within an hour had given birth. Getting through the birth pains is not an easy task, with some of those pains being easier than others. To see the new life at the end, the future comes to birth with painful groans. At the beginning of our birth pains, we have a sense of urgency accompanied by a word of caution. During the birth pains, we can experience many emotions, from happiness, to worry, to sadness, to despair, and so many more. Continuing through the birth pains, we will need to be prepared to deal with anything. Could the birth pains be Jesus telling us to be prepared for something new? Could they be to make us more alert and awake to what the realities are around us? When we become But 
bears fruit only part by tender part. God's realm of love does not arrive full blown. The future comes to birth with painful groans. Amidst all this pain and suffering that the world is experiencing, and the pain that we as individuals are experiencing, it is hard to praise Christ. However, we can remember to cling to the cross, to cling to hope, and to cling to one another. In the Gospel of Mark, we find Jesus' words constantly pointing to the cross. Jesus tells us, the end is yet to come. Fear not. This is not how the world ends. The world ends with peace, not violence. As we continue to experience history and the birth of new worlds, we are able to cling to the reality of being birthed. We know that being born is ahead of us, behind us, and also with us. We find Jesus in the past and as the goal of the future, but we also find Jesus here and now. In this community, the church, we're at our best, we poke and prod one another to do good. We can encourage one another in our weaknesses and provoke another to love. We all shed many tears from our birth to our death. It seems that at times those tears are more present than others. Let the tears that we shed be reminders of God's presence in our darkness. 